अरेस्ट बोल रहा था कोई अरेस्ट की तैयारियां कर रहे हैं अरेस्ट ए बैठ जाती है द गेस्ट आई एम जॉइन बाय टुडे ऑनेस्टली नीड्स नो इंट्रोडक्शन उनका नाम और काम दोनों ही बहुत ही बड़ा है एंड दे हैव अ टैलेंट दैट गोस बियॉन्ड द गुड लुक्स गुड लुक्स एंड गुड लुक्स और ये हीरोइन है और इस बात का कोई डाउट भी मत रखना आई एम जॉइंड बाय द एब्सोल्युटली लेजेंडरी करीना कपूर खान करीना थैंक यू सो मच फॉर जॉइनिंग अस ऑन filmishumi.com इट्स सच अ प्लेजर टू बी इन कन्वर्सेशन विद यू थैंक यू एंड थैंक यू फॉर हैविंग मी इट्स ऑलवेज नाइस टू टॉक टू यू एंड यू हैव ऑलवेज बीन सो पॉजिटिव सो आई एम रियली एक्साइटेड फॉर दिस इंटरव्यू यू नो फॉर ऑल माय फैंस अक्रॉस टू यू नो फाइनली लिसन टू मी ऑन on filmishu me i'm really happy about it yeah yeah absolutely it's so wonderful i mean look firstly a huge congratulations on such a game changing career milestone you had in 2023 um you mm-hmm. know you topped our list of game changers as well so tell me babe what have you discovered the most about yourself as an artist in the past year and how have you perhaps made peace with the fact that you have to push yourself into dark zones which are beyond your compass um i i think that i've always in fact um done different kind of dark roles for me i think even like omkara was pretty dark and it was quite early on but obviously after that it's always people have always associated me with geet and poo that you tend to always benchmark that as um you know whatever one of like you know the best performances and people like to see me in comic roles and you know uh one of those kind of parts but i think that um the past year has not been that i think i've been rediscovering myself as an actor um i think it would be since pre covid in fact mm-hmm. since i signed mm-hmm. dal singh chadda because even in lal singh it was like a very very different kind of a character that you've not seen before like i think rupa sama was the backbone and the anchor to that part to the entire film uh so for me i think the journey and the rediscovery of myself as an actor started with that and of course continued with jaane ja and bucking her murders and of course even cruise uh is different because it's actually one of its kind because you've never really seen a heist film like an oceans 11 oceans 8 kind of vibe in india with three mainstream actors kind of headlining it so honestly i mean i think the the rediscovery journey is just begun because i want to explore doing so many different paths not just doing dark roles but also including roles like crew in my repertoire because i think that's what also fans like to see absolutely and i'm so glad you marked about the first of many of of crew because like you rightly mentioned as well um it's so rare for a hindi comedy heist film to be narrated through the lens of women uh you know and i think it's so nice to see the way we've seen that whole depiction of flight attendants evolve you know i mean from garam masala 20 years ago which was absolutely a laugh riot and to now yeah. seeing you know you you know take center stage as flight attendants and the fact that we had yami as well do chor nikal ke bhaga recently i think it's yes. so wonderful to see this representation evolving and it's your first collab with obviously dabu and kriti sanan as well yeah, um, yeah so you know beyond this whole comedic sort of um appeal and this really mass entertainer appeal when it comes to characters like this which are obviously ambitious you know they have dreams of their own but there's also a very strong lighthearted uh aspect to them how does an actor find that most appropriate pitch when performing on screen um i personally enjoy doing a lot of like comedy roles as well so whether it was poo in k3g or golmal dabu in golmal 3 or you know now in uh, crew i i personally also have fun with it the idea is that to have fun with you know the kind of roles you've done i've been very lucky that in k3g i had like such again like such stalwart actors and amazing actors to bounce off with you know whether it was rithik and kajal um sharuk and i think in golmal as well there were like 
you know, they were all such amazing actors, Kunal, Shreyas, all of them, Tushar. So I think actors bounce off each other's energy and that's really important. And in crew, um, I mean, both Tabu and Kriti are absolutely, I mean, you know, Tabu is just stellar and, and Kriti, of course, is supremely talented. Um, so I think we bounced off each other's energies because our characters are so different from each other that automatically my character kind of comes across as a little comical because, um, you know, their parts are also like drastically different. So when you see us, so I, I strongly believe that I, um, I will always be as good as the scene, the script and as well as my other co-actors. Mm -hmm. So I think in crew, we've all come together to, I think, hit it out of the park, hopefully, because we really worked hard. Oh, absolutely. And I think that that effort is definitely visible on, on screen. And I mean, I, I found it so fun. I watched this show and after a long time, it just felt like a very effortless film. You know, it just felt like we needed to watch something. Yeah, exactly. And I think if it's recently been a lot about, um, you know, like a lot of action movies, a lot of drama, um, you know, all of that. People have been really going for those kind of movies, of course. But I think Crew, in its way, with three of us headlining this movie, I think in its way, it's a big ticket film because, mm. you know, I would like to believe that in, in our film industry, we've also come a long way to have three uh, strong, act, you know, actresses who can headline a movie. It, it doesn't have to just be, um, you know, a male dominated thing so I, I firmly believe and I'm, I'm hoping the audience is going to support this kind of movie yeah definitely and especially if you look at like in the last two years films like Gungo Bai did really well even last yeah. year female oriented stories as well did really really well as Absolutely. well as so you know it, it's great to see that movement finally happening happening you know especially in Indian cinema um but I think one thing I must tell you uh Bebo is that versatility is something you've always strived for. And I was watching a few of your films um, and it's quite ironic as well that 20 years ago you did ventures like Fida, Dev, Halchal and Aetraz in one year. Yeah. Um, all of them were not conventional masala films. I mean, of course, they were commercial, but they weren't typical yeah. potboilers, so to speak. Um, yeah. Was it always a conscious decision for you to take up projects that serve perhaps a middle ground between socially relevant yet commercial cinema as well? Uh, that actually, it, it always has been a little bit of a, a thought and a conscious effort because for me, I've always known how to balance this fact of, you know, people always looking at me as an actor and as a star, but I've always put the actor before me which not many people I'm sure now have realized, but I've been actually doing it from Chameli, like you mentioned films like Fida, which is a very dark film, uh, where actually I played a, a negative hero and I was the killer in the film. Mm -hmm. So I think that I've always put choosing good roles and being an actor before being a star. And that has always been incidental to me. So um, doing a good part is something that I've always enjoyed doing. So I do make a conscious effort of straddling, you know, a film and its commercial value as well as a slightly performance-oriented role. I mean, even in a film like Good News, um, if you see the, it's a complete commercial package. But if you see my role, it's still got a lot of scope for performance because I made a conscious effort that it has to have something to do. To do. Um, it's tough to balance that in its way, but I also enjoy films like Dave, which I did very early on with Govindelani in my career. So it's actually always like you said, and I'm happy that you've you know noticed and asked me this question because versatility and trying to prove that over and over again has always been what I want. Yeah, absolutely. And you know, I think that's, that's the absolute beauty. It's like even like good news like you mentioned, that monologue. Oh my goodness. I remember watching it in the cinema and I was deeply moved by that monologue because it really hits the core. Yeah. And I think exactly. that's what's important. You know, and you know, actually I remember, Bebo, when you came in Refugee and I remember seeing you and the first shot of yours where the hair was blowing and, you know, there was this very beautiful 
presentation of you as a heroine but there was still this enigma about you and i feel like that enigma has continued in all the films you look gorgeous i mean there's no doubt about it but there is a sense of mystery attached that you have uh, about you again ye mystery kahan se aati hai do you think ye bas bhagwan ki den hai ya do you consciously have to add that mystery and that enigma to the roles you play no i think that it's also because i am i don't know i i still am from um a generation that believes in this because i've grown up watching my favorite actors and actresses also being a slight mystery whether it was you know karishma sri devi kajol madhuri these are actors that i've always admired and um you know loved dearly and always you know wanted my name to be that okay i would want to be like them in some way or the other so i don't know if even they had a slight mystery about them you know mm-hmm. so i think that i do belong to a generation where i am still getting used to the fact of other uh, paparazzi the instagram the twitter i i come from a slightly old school i still have that 20 30% in my heart where sometimes i'm just like i think it's all too much <laughs> and you know what's happening i think everything is and everyone's invading my privacy and why is this happening and mm-hmm. i also mm-hmm. want to strictly be known through my movies mm-hmm. but of course times have changed and now i do move with the times and i do understand that it's all about like a little bit of instagram a little bit of you know you know your branding and you know your advertisements and stuff like that so it's i i try to balance but i deep down in my core i still come from a, a the thought of that i feel like there should be a bit of like privacy and like you asked a slight or about you know yeah what what is actually happening <laughs> Oh, but you've definitely evolved very well with the times. Huh? I have to say, I think it's definitely not easy. I mean, bless my mother. I still have to tell her sometimes. Like she's like, "Acha, ye forward kaise karte? Acha, ye mere ko Instagram pe reel dekhna hai." So bless her. I still have to guide her sometimes. Because... Yeah, I mean, our parents are like, they don't know what's going on. They're like, you know, it's like it's all too much information to consume to uh, hack, you know. But it's yeah. nice sometimes to like get away and you know. just kind of re take a little bit of reinvention rejuvenation absolutely but you know another thing another trait i've identified especially in the characters that you've done uh there is often a sort of dual personality traits in your characters for instance there is this ambitious vivacious free spirited zindadili emotion which then sort of contrasts to someone who is more rebellious and wanting to fight suppression of sorts uh what has impacted these particular characteristics in the roles you've chosen and do you think that it is perhaps an extension of what you are in real life as well um uh, i mean like i don't know i always believe that people connect to such characters because no one is 100% everyone has a slight ambition and a gray side everyone has a slight um uh, thought like like in crew i feel like she's a slight gold digger with but with a golden heart <laughs> and that somehow like everyone instantly is like you know i don't know connects with because somehow everyone in life has a little bit of trait but your heart is always in the right place you know mm. so i somehow connect to these kind of characters because i enjoy playing them i enjoy bringing them to life uh because i somehow feel they're a lot more entertaining on screen you know there's something like to them It's just interesting how you know I love it when there's that internal conflict as well. Even yeah. If you look at Geet, you know. It's more complex. It's more you know the graph is it more fun to watch to perform. Uh, that's why Jasmine in Crew also has this conflict. It's like there, but the, but then the fact is that she's you know uh, like I said, gold digger with a golden heart. You know, I mean that's I just find these kind of characters um, so much more fun on screen and. it's i don't think but i've been lucky that i've got these but i mean i like to choose roles that i know that will be slightly um uh, likable somehow mm. the audience likes to always feel entertained and that they can feel a likability towards the person yeah it's like even like people look at shri devi's judai for example and again if you look at that character it was a 
it was a really ridiculous character. It was pathetic, actually. But, you know. Yeah, but you loved way, her. Yeah, the way she presented it. And that's the acting. That's where the art comes into it. Um, yeah, and I think crazy. also, it's it's remarkable how you've literally held the fort as a superstar for 25 years. In fact, next year marks a silver jubilee as well, which is incredible. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> Not to quantify it, but, you know, but I think when you have reached this set of success this stage of success I mean you know you've witnessed it all people I mean you know you've been in that era where there was cat fights where there was things said in the media even now um but there's also been that love and that praise that you've had and like the fans adore you as well at the same time how have you learned though somehow to block all these external noises and just you know sort of focus on your internal self um I think the fact, like I said, that that's why I think that because I'm slightly more conservative and old school in that sense of because I come from a different generation, I think that somehow has kept my core kind of um, like, yeah, my feet firmly on the ground. Mm. Of course, I also come from a family where my parents have been very grounding in my life and they still are like they constantly like make me feel like you know that I must keep proving myself mm. but to fulfill mm. my passion and mm. to mm. never feel tired and to never feel like okay this is it you know like you said 25 years and okay now I'm done I think that they've always encouraged they've always made me feel like I should um, strive for more or better in my roles and my films that I've done which is important um, also, I think longevity, if I may say, Anuj, comes from the fact that reinvention and self-preservation. And I'm very high up on self-preservation, which is this constant need to be uh, in the news or constant need to be clicked or constant need to be at a certain position is something that I'm, I like to do, but I also like to run away from it sometimes. So yeah. I, when I run yeah. away from it, then I completely like run away and switch off. And then that's, you know, time with my family, my friends, my children. So that part of me is very, very well protected. And I think that has also helped me mm. be mm. the person I am today. You know, mm. all mm. my friends, all my family members, my husband, my two children, people around me, I think keep me... Um, grounded and it's because of them also that I am there absolutely I mean you know sometimes I see these videos you know where they the, where the paps are videoing and photograph like photographing you and their moves and Jay's like mm -hmm. like antics are hilarious to watch sometimes yeah. <laughs> they have this very beautiful witty sense of humor which I think actually comes from Seth actually because from when I interviewed yeah, Seth, they're actually both quite like him Jay just looks like me but Jay has Seth's naughtiness and Tim has like Seth's kind of like a a sense of humor, but he's a bit more like reserved, like a little away from, doesn't like being clicked, you know, like more mm -hmm. like his father. Yeah. Jay's more like his, like me. Yeah. But then yeah. I mean, in terms of like look and a little more vibe, but his naughtiness comes from Seth. Absolutely. No, for sure. But I think Bebo, the way you have evolved is, is, is remarkable. And this whole 2.0 of Karina Kapoor Khan, I'm absolutely loving so far as well. And I think, you know, I was watching some old award ceremony where you were getting an award. And I think the way you were then and the way you are now, I mean, a complete journey it's been. So yeah, yeah. if you were to sit back in a, tra uh, in a time travel machine and revisit your younger self, what advice would you give to her? I think that uh, I, I would definitely like say that, you know, don't worry, everything will work out. Because I think when you're younger, you're, you have a lot of like anxiety, you have a lot of like, you know, you just want to kind of just have that rush. Mm. You know, that kind of feel that in your 20s, you have that. But I, I want to like go back and say that, okay, don't be so kind of restless and anxious. Um, but I mean, like even, but even though today before a film, I still kind of get a little, I mean, you know, it's like a final <laughs> exam. Yeah, <laughs> I think, but I think that's what keeps me going because if I, you know, put my feet up and just be like, okay, fine. 
then I won't be able to pull another 25, which is the plan. Oh, yes. Oh, I love that. I absolutely <laughs> love that. What would you say has been, you know, do you have any regrets at all? I actually have no regrets because uh, I think every decision that has been taken or whether it's been, you know, on a whim, whether it's been, um, I don't know, when I was younger and just like, you know, maybe rash decisions uh, foolish decisions or whatever. I mean, people might, might say 101 things that, oh, she was offered so many good movies and she didn't do them and blah and blah. But I believe that every film is a kismet. And in that kismet, I didn't write my name in that film. You know, so I was not meant to be in that film. So however it panned out, but that destiny and that time was not mine. So I have always looked back at my career as it's okay. That it's fine something else will work out. And, and that is exactly what has happened. So I, I never have, I don't want to have a life full of regrets. I want to have a life that I look back and I can say that, yeah, okay, fine, this, that, that, and everything happened, but it's brought me here today. True. It's, it's all part of the process, isn't it? So tell me, what would you say is your biggest strength and what do you fear the most? Uh, I think my biggest strength is my confidence that I have. And I'm a very confident actor. And that is something that I hold very close to my heart because that is actually one of my strengths to survive in this industry. And uh, I don't fear to lose anything apart from, I think, my family because um, that's everything to me. And my world is centered around, you know, like very few people. My parents, my sister, my two children, and my husband. So I think, yeah, that that's it. It just, the buck stops there. The buck stops there, absolutely, no, for sure. But look, I think coming back to, uh, you know, the Bartaman, as we say in Hindi, you know, I think the, the sort of stint you've had is amazing, especially as a producer. I mean, congratulations on the Buckingham murders. Honestly, I, I mean, you know how fond I was of your performance I mean you know I don't want to give any spoilers because the film is yet to release and I think it was one scene just the opening sequence the way you just did you know enact that internal pain as you know I mentioned to you I mean oh my god I could not identify you as a superstar I saw you as an artist in that film and I think that was yeah. a really big homecoming like honestly in I, I genuinely I can't wait for people to to actually watch Buckingham Murder because, I mean, we obviously wanted crew to come first and then, you know, Buckingham to come. It's a slightly different film for the Indian audiences, as you've seen, because it's half Hindi, half English. But the idea was, like I told you, that like, to keep doing something different. That's mm -hmm. the most important thing. Nothing more is as important. Yeah. So for me, that's what it is. And I know uh, quite a few times you did say that you were really like inspired by like Kate Winslet in Mare of East Town. But I do feel somewhere that your instincts as a mother really kicked in here. I mean, I don't know. I mean, I, I mean, this is just from my observation. But how did you feel? You know, because when you are in that situation where, you know, you're sort of, again, uh, conflicted between personal and profession, this whole conflict of, you know, you being a police officer as well as a grieving mother. <laughs> How did you deal with that? Because it must have been a very, very morbid space to visit. Of course, it was awful because when you just the thought of it. Uh, but obviously, I think being a mother also did help me a lot in, in the performance, you know. And I think the character, like, I think Jazz is so close to me that I don't, I still feel like I don't want to let go of that character. I feel like, I hope we can still keep making multiple parts where this grieving detective would keep solving different murders, you know, and, you know, we would make it into like a two, three part kind of film or series. I don't know. I, but I want to take it forward because I'm so in love with the character and the way I played it. Yeah. I mean, Bebo, there's so many stories. Huh? I have to tell you, I, I'll actually send you some news articles, which I think you might find yeah. very for some potential. Yeah, material. So I'm happy to make, you know, these different things into, you know, I want it to keep going because I don't want to let go of it. Sure. And you know what? I think, again, it's quite ironic because we also had Mrs. Chatterjee versus Norway, which, again, really showcased the the the, the harsh reality of NRIs living abroad. You know, we've always had yeah. these romanticized 
visuals, which have been great to watch as well. But I think it was very refreshing to have the you know gritty reality shown. So again, yeah. you know, just to sort of follow up on on what you just mentioned here with Mahana, um, you know, how if at all do you hope to back more hard hitting stories of Indians actually living abroad as well? I think that you know it's. I would love to tell stories of you know different kinds from you know different parts of the world, and if we could do that through this series also i think that would be amazing um uh, for me it's not about where what how i think it's more of a human story of where mm. it belongs where the place is what it is doesn't i want the human story to connect so hopefully we will be able to tell a lot of interesting stories in the future that's what our plan is but um, let's see i first want the you know film to release yeah, and I think it's also, again, good because, you know, you have a very strong commercial value as an artist, right? And it's nice how you're championing stories which would otherwise, you know, perhaps be overlooked. You know, it's a great marketing strategy as well, to be honest. So we are hopefully, like, you know, targeting um, um, a release in August, September, and then it'll come in to an, on Netflix. Oh, exciting. Absolutely exciting. But from one cop to another cop universe, so to speak, um, it's very exciting <laughs> to sort of see you in Singham again. I mean, I can't yeah. believe it's been but a I'm not. I'm not playing a cop in that. So that's, I'm very happy. <laughs> but it's yeah. definitely, I'm surrounded by all the cops. <laughs> right. I was going to say, though, because again, like, you know, I, I was going I'm literally my question was literally to you how much more action packed will your role be this time I mean what what can we expect from your character because I mean I remember seeing it like 10 years ago when the last one released so uh I think that uh it's going to be honestly it's high male testosterone but this is going to be really different because uh, I don't want to reveal I can't reveal too much about the film but I mean, I'm super excited about my role in this because it's very, very, very uh, pivotal to the plot. It's 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 not a cop, but it's it's different. It's emotional, and I'm sure people. It's going to be obviously huge. Goes without saying, <laughs> but uh, I think that it's. Uh, I'm excited again, and hopefully, um, yeah, it's going to release August. So it's again going to be a big ticket one. But I, like you said, have to straddle the Buckingham murders as well as the Singhams and everything together. It's all like, that's what I'm saying. They're all like going to be cops and they're all doing and Arjun's look was spectacular. And I mean, it's, I think it's going to be fab. People are going to love to watch, like you said, there's, you know, there's Tiger, there's Deepika, there's Ranveer. There's so many people that people I think are just, it's going to be obviously it is like the Avengers. <laughs> yeah, it's the masala film we've all wanted and needed for a while. I think so. And this year, I think that is the, you know, this is one of the big ticket. It is the only big ticket film of the year. Hundred percent, absolutely, no doubt about it. Right on a final note, Karina, uh, I think we've all been very keenly anticipating you in a South film. I mean, not to <laughs> quote coffee with Karan here, but there's been a lot of conjecture about you doing one when can we expect to see you in a South film so I mean you know I, I've always been toying with the idea it's something that you know um, it's something different and it's been something on my mind and now that I think the entire uh, North, South, East, West industries are you know going global merging that today it's all about the film rather than you know where it is or like I said, where it's being shot, what it is, what language it's in. I think, so I am considering being a part of it. Oh. But I I mean, you, everyone will know soon enough because I want to like be 100% sure. But I'm definitely, definitely, um, my heart is on on something, that's for sure. Absolutely. And do you know what? I think I'm so happy to hear this, by the way, and very excited to hear this. And I think also the fact that Indian cinema is identified as one now. You know, Yojo, North or South ka divide tha. I have no idea where it's come from, why it's been there. But, you know, for the longest amount of time, it's kind of in a way segregated our own people, even if we look at Northeast as well. Um, for you as an Indian actor, how proud do you feel at this 
union that we're finally having as one entity? I think that, you know, in, in, in movies have never had a language, should never have. It's an emotion. Yeah. When you're watching a film, even with the subtitles, whatever language, however it is, where you're watching a show, however, I think you always think about how you're feeling while watching. What emotion you're feeling. Are you happy? When are you are you sad? I, is it touching you? I think you know that's what it is. So how does language? I don't think that should ever be a barrier. And I'm so happy that in today's time we're not thinking of all that. We're thinking of the story, of the content, uh, and of the intent. So I think of all these three things come together. I think you know, language doesn't really matter. Because I mentioned game changer earlier. Uh, and I think obviously crew, there's a there's a tagline called risk it as well that I saw in one of the posters. Uh, what would you say is now going to be your biggest risk? And also, what do you think could you know be another game changer for you going forward as well? Well, I don't know. I think that the, my next choice of films, which I'm going to do uh, this year, there are two big ticket films. There's Crew and Singham again, and then after that, it's you know, which film I take, whether I, like I said, in which language, I don't know. And I think the next two, three films that I sign will determine the fact that, you know, whether I am again taking risks, because I always have done that. True. So um, I want to work with certain directors I have on my bucket list. So, um, and, oh, they're both wow. female, and they're both female directors. So, um it just happens that I'm, I'm huge fans. So I hope and in my journey of the next five, 10 years, I hope I can have their name as well in, you know, my career graph. Absolutely. Absolutely. Well, look, Bebo, gosh, this has been such a long time coming. And honestly, I'm so, so grateful. And thank you. And we'll definitely time. meet when I come to London. Because I can't yeah, please, we must. Honestly, there's so much we've got to discuss, I think, as well. And I think I it so we'll, much we'll do a face-to-face -face interview. And uh, you, when you see Crew, you should tell me. And, you know, it'll, I'm sure you'll have a blast while watching it. And, uh, yeah, so hopefully in the summer. I plan to come in the summer. Oh, amazing. That's good. Well, definitely, no, I'll definitely, like, hit you up. Yeah. Sure. And um, it's great, and honestly. For a coffee or something, we'll eat. Yeah, no, pakka, done deal hai, done deal hai. And yeah. honestly, like, oh. it's so great to see you in crew, honestly, because I absolutely adore Kriti Sanan so much. And I think Tabu is amazing. Yeah. I think just seeing the three of you come together, the synergy, that Choli Ke Piche song, by the way, I'm still waiting for it to release. I uh, um, know, I think it's going to come out in the next three, four days. Oh, good. I can't wait. I, I can't wait. That's going to be on my playlist for sure. And I can't just wait to watch the film. It looks like a really fun film. And honestly, Bebo, congratulations. Honestly, you really, really nailed it. It's amazing. Yeah. Thank you. And look forward to hearing from you. And I will see you when I come for sure. Done. Thank cool. you. Thank, thank, you, thank, you, thank, you, thank you. Thank you for waiting and being patient. No, thank it's you. always a pleasure. Thank you. Bye, Bebo. Thank you. Bye. Bye.